morning and welcome to the awaited our show that is dedicated to coming to know the Imam of our time, alayhi salam, better. I'm Rebecca Masterton and my guest is someone who you all know, Sister Zahra al Alawi. And today we're talking about the status of women in relation to the Imam, alayhi salam. What will their role be uh, in uh, when the Imam reappears, inshallah? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Thanks for um, uh, giving us your time on the show as well. No problem. You've got a lot of um, experience to talking about. You know, issues related to to women, mm. and um, so and often when we hear about you know the signs of the coming of the Imam, we're thinking of um, often the role that men take in the army, mm. and uh, although we know some of them will be will be women, um, but just looking at um, it's, it's quite interesting to think about how he his role in relation to the status of of women uh, as well and. Perhaps is it possible to give us an idea of this, what the status of women was in pre-Islamic Arabia and what it is now and how he will reform the status of women? Um, well, um, alaikum as salam and thanks for having me on the show. Um, you're absolutely right. When we talk about Imam Mahdi and we talk about um, his reappearance, we often talk about men, the roles of men and um, you know, the events to um, his, the signs um, of his reappearance. Mm -hmm. It was always related to men. We hardly speak about the women. In fact, there's little information about the roles of women. But, um, you know, in our everyday life, if women don't put um, their, one of their goals to be the officials of Imam Mahdi or to be coming to assist Imam Mahdi in his reappearance, it's not put on our priority list. And I think if more women think about the roles and the status of women, especially at the advent of Imam Mahdi, alayhi salam, ajallah ta'ala farja, then, you know, then we'll, we will prosper in our life. You know, to fully understand the status or the reform that Imam Mahdi will bring to women and the roles that women will have when Imam Mahdi reappears, <coughs> we have to analyze the status of women um, in pre-Islamic mm -hmm. Arabia, the reform that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam brought, and then um, the current status of women, and then obviously the reform that Imam Mahdi will bring. If you look at pre-Islamic Arabia, women have no rights at all. They mm -hmm. have a role, they don't have a status. Um, women were seen as an embarrassment to her family. As we know that when a female or a newborn a girl was born, it was seen as an embarrassment to the family. Their faces were, were blackened and wow. you know, they were seen, um, she was seen as an embarrassment. She's not, gonna, she's not gonna bring anything to the family. She's not gonna assist the family. Yeah. There's nothing that she can bring. Um, and women had no rights to education. Um, they, didn't, they had no rights to education. They had no rights at all as human beings. They weren't considered as a human being in a sense. Yeah. So you see, when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam came, he gave rights to women. It's very interesting because the rights that he gave to women is the same rights that Prophet Muhammad, that um, Imam Mahdi Allah Taala Farij is going to bring to women. For example, um, when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, if we read about the battles that he that he participated in and that he led, you'll see that women were there assisting Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. They were treating the, the injured. Um, they were there for medical assistance. So you see that that's the same thing, that's the role of women when yeah, um, Imam Mahdi yeah, comes, yeah. they're going to assist um, the men in the battlefield as well. So you see that um, he gave rights and responsibilities, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave rights and responsibilities to women um, which were corresponding with the rights and responsibilities of men as well. So you see, um, it's quite interesting actually because when you talk about Islamic history, Everyone always talks about the companions, the male companions yeah, do, of the yeah, Prophet. Yeah. They talk about how um, the males and how they structured the religion and they made the religion, spread the religion. But there, was, there were thousands of women who um, spread the religion as well. And Islam is based um, on the participation and the roles of women as well. Yeah. And it's quite interesting because these same women will come back and assist Imam Mahdi as right. well, which we'll speak about later on. Sure. But, um, so, you might, so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave so much rights to women, you know, we, they had the rights to education, they had the rights to spread the religion, they were yeah. the envoys of spreading the religion, lectures, um, the they, they, majority of our hadiths are narrated by women, and um, he gave the rights to women. So now when you come to, in today's age, you see that the status of women is once again declining. Yeah. We're seen as a commodity. Um, you just open the television and you see how females are sexualized. Yeah. Um, we're once again seen as sexual figures. And um, you know, just yesterday I switched on the television and there was a comedy show and it was just talking about women and their sexuality. That's oh, all. Wow. So I'm thinking we're not being considered for our intellect no more. And you see that the status of women is once again declining. So when Imam Mahdi comes, he's going to restore, restore the status of women. 
and he's going to give women a positions in his army. They're going to be, the, uh, women are going to be his officials. They're going to assist him in his revolution. Yeah. So once again, women will um, be, you know, they, they're going to be the sole figures of spreading, um, to participating in spreading the region of Islam, mm -hmm. the correct region of Islam, bringing back justice. So you see, once again, he's going to restore the status of woman, and he's going to, um, he's going to, um, he's going to make them the officials. Mm -hmm. yeah. Inshallah. I mean, it, we can see as well that um, women are, as they were, as you say, on the battlefield, on the front line, which also, also shows that women must have had, obviously, uh, intelligence, they were mm -hmm. respected, mm -hmm. they were trusted yeah. as well, um, in, you know, to participate. They weren't mocked or ridiculed. I mean, yeah. as you say today, um, it, it is quite tragic what, what has happened to women where it, it's got very ruthless, where women sort of feel that um, in order to be loved, not even be loved, in order to work their way up the career ladder, mm -hmm. they have to um, look a certain way, yeah. you know, and they have to yeah. kind of be put up with being treated in a certain way. And once again, inshallah, um, there's going to be, you know, a, a, a change or restoration, we could say, of, of this, um, the, the, the role that women are playing. Yeah. Once again, they're going to be, um, again, women of intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> Inshallah. Um, yeah. And also, they, it must mean that they should be able to understand his commands, as in, um, if, he, you know, if he's given them commands, they can execute those commands yeah. perfectly, um, which means that they should be well-trained uh, as well, Inshallah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, also, just um, looking at, we know that, this is a kind of other ironic thing where people say that um, the situation of women, um, perhaps since industrial times, has improved. Mm. Um, but there are a lot of narrations that are talking about how things will become very difficult mm. uh, for women. What, what will the situation of women be just before the reappearance of the Imam? Um, as we said, the situation of women is declining as we see the status of women. It was seen, we're seen as, um, we are being sexualized and seen as a commodity. But just before the reappearance of Imam Mahdi, we always hear about the um, signs of his reappearance. We yeah. hear about the signs. But it's interesting because there's some narrations that specifically talk about the, the status of women, and okay. um, that will be the sign of the reappearance of Imam Mahdi. Um, as we know, that poverty will spread. Um, in the world, there'll be a lot of poverty. Right. That, um, that That's one of the signs of the reappearance of Imam Mahdi. There's a specific hadith which mentions, me mentions that... Um, the Imam Mahdi will not appear until men will begin will begin um, selling their daughters for yeah. food, yeah. for food supplies. So there'll be so much poverty that um, that men will begin giving up their daughters, and that's what happened in pre-Islamic Arabia. Yeah. They were giving up their daughters and selling their daughters. So once again, there's a hadith which says that the Imam Mahdi, the Mahdi will not appear, reappear until men um, begin to sell their daughters for food supplies. Yeah. And they say, um, and it's at that situation and that circumstance that the Imam, Meh the Imam Mehdi will reappear. So you see, once again, women will be seen as there'll be so much poverty, so much injustice that women yeah. will just be seen as on the side. They'll, they're not, they don't have a status, and men will be the individuals which have status and will be individuals. Um, so when when the Imam Mehdi reappears, then then you know, women will be in such a need that when the Imam Mehdi reappears, he will once again give the status back mm -hmm. to women. Inshallah. Uh, I think that's true that you can see, um, I remember seeing a, a, a program on um, how uh, it was, it was actually in Africa and it was a non-Muslim family and how the, the, the status of the daughters in, in that family, there was one daughter where um, her, her father literally wanted to sort of sell her um, mm -hmm. in order to gain a certain amount of cattle and mm -hmm. also a certain amount of drink. Oh. And um, and she was trying to kind of rebel against this whole arrangement, and um, she ran away and she disappeared. Like her mother helped her to yeah. to escape, but she ran away. And they recorded this whole conversation going on between the mother and the father. Yeah. The father saying, "My daughter is no good. I can't get anything from her. You know, I mean, she's not going to bring me the cattle. She's not going to bring me the alcohol. So you know, what use is she to me?" And then we can see other countries where, as you say, because of um, starvation and hunger. I mean, we get these stories in the news of different countries where, you know, 
very young girls are married off. Mm -hmm. But often people don't understand that that, that is often because the family is, is, is desperate. Yeah. And you know, they're, they're, they're literally starving. And someone has come along and said, you know, I'll, I'll give you a certain amount, dowry, um, you know, and I'll, you can marry your daughter to me. Mm -hmm. So, so we can see how, I mean, it's, it's pretty terrible yeah. e even now. Yes, do you remind me of something? There's a documentary actually in India. Um, I mean, it's about yeah. India. So I don't know if you've seen it before. It says that in, there's parts of, um, there's places in India where ultra scans are actually banned. Oh. Because women, um, you know, before having the child, they see the ultra scan. And when the, when the results come as a girl, they actually kill it. Yeah. And um, it was actually, uh, I can't remember the exact name, but everyone should watch it because it just reminds you of pre Islamic Arabia and how women had no status and the same is happening. Yeah. So they interviewed some families. They said, you know, why are you, um, you know, why are you saddened when, when the news yeah. comes that you, you're having a girl? And they said, well, she's not going to do anything for us. She can't assist the family. She can't bring anything. She's not going to bring the money in. So uh, whereas a man, uh, whereas a boy will assist the family and... and so you see that it is happening today. Yeah. In this generation, we talk about pre-Islamic Arabia, like we're shocked that women, that women or families were saddened to have a girl. But it still happens today. Yeah. And um, that's why we see when Imam Mehdi comes in, the status of women gets elevated, that they, they, will, they will assist their families. They will assist the Imam himself, yeah. let alone yeah. their families. Assisting the Ahl Bayt. Yeah, mm -hmm. assisting Salam. the Ahl Bayt. Um, and then, of course, looking at uh, the, the, the women who have been... Um, well, who will be assisting the Imam, inshallah. We know that some of the, the 313 will be, will be women. Yeah. Um, what, what kinds of work will they, will they be doing for the Imam? Or could, I mean, obviously, I don't know, this is another thing that we're, I'm not sure about whether it's women who will be born at that time or it's women who will be raised at that time mm. because we have, you know, the dua where we say, you know, dua ahd, like raise my, if I'm not, if I'm not alive when the Imam comes then mm. raise me from my grave. grave yeah so i don't know if it's if it's women today who could mm. be the companions of the imam or whether it's women at, mm. in that time who, who will be the companions that's very interesting you say that because there's different narrations about the amount of women first of all right, okay. and who the women will be so first of all you know about women um the hadith tell us that it's women alive today um, there's women obviously that haven't been born that will assist the imam and it's women that have already died and the hadith okay. specifically mentions some of the women that will be resurrected to assist the imam so there's specific names mentioned as well right. like some women which will be so we know who they are which will assist the imam and then there's some that we don't know who they are okay and imam hamad al-baqir said that um that um, imam mahdi ajal will have 313 um male officials and then he'll have um, 50, 50 um, female right. officials. So, um, but there's different narrations. I mean, there's narrations which say there's going to be 400 women who will okay. assist the imam. But these 400 are, has, have been said that they will just assist in medical treatment. So, in terms of health and medical tr treatment, there's other hadith which say it's only 13 individuals, which right, um, right. 13 females, which will assist the imams. So it will assist the imam. So these 13, in terms of that narration, people say that these will assist. They'll be the first. Um, they'll be the first people to assist the imam. So they'll assist him in his uprising, right. and then more will join um, after his uprising. And then there's another narration which says 7,800 females will assist the imam. So yeah. So in terms of that narration, people say that these women will assist after the uprising. So the, and they'll, they'll have numerous activities as well, not just um, assisting in terms of medical treatment. So, um, so there's different narrations about yeah. the amount of females, but even the men, there's 313 men, but these are his officials. You have to remember that these are his officials. Right. There'll be thousands of men and women in his army, but these are his officials. There's 313, and then there's some amount of women, but there'll be thousands of people in the in the um, right assisting the imam in his army, yeah. but these are the main um, officials in okay. his army. And then you talk about being resurrected. Um, there's actually a narration by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu yes. alaihi wa sallam. It says that Isa ibn Maryam will be will descend and to help the imam, and he will descend amidst um, seven thousand and eight hundred women, and these women will be the best inhabitants on earth. And um, and these will be the women that um, and some of them will be women that have been resurrected, so the best from the past as well. So they're the best from the past. So you have women joining the imam from the present, um, the past, and obviously 
well now there may be some women that were assist yeah. assisted mom that haven't been born. So um, that that makes us um, probably think differently and feel differently because mm -hmm. that means anyone. Um, watching this program mm. could, we don't know yeah, what, what, what our role will be. Because sometimes you think, um, okay, for this period of time mm. that, that, that I'm alive, I'll do like whatever I can, you mm. know, I'll do my best. And, and um, maybe for some women, it's like raising charity for mm. something. Other women, it's setting up education systems um, to raise up the next generation. And, and then you think, okay, I've, I've done my best, you know, mm. but we don't know that maybe out of all that, some people could be, you know, if they've shown that in this life, how they have been, um, uh, you know, good, good mm. for the Ahlul Bayt al-Islam, good for the cause. Yeah. yeah, then they can be. They can be. We don't, we don't think, we don't know who's going to assist the Imam. Yeah. And it's, it's all about us striving to do the best that we can because that's that like i said that should be our priority that should be our aims but it's yeah, not yeah. in this generation you know ask people do you know anything about the army of the imam do you know about the imam his reappearance they don't know much about no. it and they don't strive to become the best individuals so they can assist the imams and there's also a i in the holy quran it's source of baqarah uh, verse number 148 and it's in it's in regards to the the individuals that will assist the Imam, it says, um, no matter where you are, Allah will gather you, and um, Allah will gather you, and Allah is capable of all things. Right. So, in terms of that, Imam al-Baqarah speaks about this ayah, and he says that um, he says that the individuals that will assist the Imam, Allah will gather them without any previous arrangement. So they haven't arranged with the Imam previously. He will gather them and um, like like clustering clouds right. in the sky. So they'll come all together and they'll come together in um, between the black stone of Kaaba and the Maqam Ibrahim. Wow, wow. And there they'll pay the allegiance to the Imam and then the Imam will reappear and um, and so they will become the officials of the Imam. So that's what I'm talking about the uprising. There are a certain amount of women that will be there in his uprising. And there's women that will join later on as well. Inshallah. I think that's, um, we've just got a few minutes to break, but um, I think that's a good point that you that you make about um, knowing the the Imam, uh, alayhi salam, because I think, uh, Ajila Farash Sharif, because I think also, um, even, even when, uh, you know, if you are growing up, um, within the deen or, you know, you're converted to the deen. Um, sometimes, you know, you might find that um, he hasn't been mentioned very much. Like, people might have not heard about him much in their lives or they don't really understand much about him. And, uh, and of course, that means that... Um, the, the the women of this of this ummah are going to have a much more kind of limited idea about what their role mm. could be. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've had people where they they um, think that uh, you know the the, the duties of the, of of the woman are for this life. For example, the husband will be focusing on um, her her duties mm. as as his wife. Mm. But actually, it's an, it would be an interesting thought for someone to think that. Maybe this woman who I'm married to, mm. again, could be, you know, chosen by by exactly. the Imam, inshallah. Mm. But we have to prepare ourselves. I think yeah. you're so right that that um, we are very unprepared. We're unprepared. Yeah. And the thing is, when we talk about the Imam and his revolution, it's always as if the men are the only people that are going to assist yeah. the Imam. You know, you see now the majority of scholars are men. The majority of people that give lectures are men. Yeah. And the majority of people that serve the religion and are envoys to the religion are men. Yeah. As if the men are the only indiv or the only species or not species, <laughs> the only yeah. sex that yeah. should um, that should spread the religion. Yeah. But in, in fact, that when the um, Imam reappears, a big portion of his officials, the individuals that will assist right. him in his mission, are going to be women. Okay. So why don't we educate the women in this generation? Why don't we push them forward and make them into worthy individuals with, yeah. um, with edu who are intelligent and have education and are individuals that they, you know, will be proud to for yeah. them to be um, the individuals which assist the Imam. Inshallah. Yeah. yeah, I think I think we need to. Um, really you know start from instilling confidence yeah. in 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 the girls um you know all sort of as as they grow up to become to become adults yeah. inshallah so that by by the time we are ready and i think now when we look at um a lot of the pressures a lot of the trends that that, that, that are out there in society um we find quite a lot of um muslim women and girls 
kind of doing a half half to mm. try to cover both both worlds yeah so sort of uh, and and I think you know we really need to it's not easy but to to try to to decide, you know, do I want this dunya or do I want the akhira? Mm, exactly. And and to, to say no, I'm not going to lose anything mm. by by choosing the akhira. Really. Exactly. So I think some women sort of have this 50 50 mm. approach just to just to think, well, you know, I'll keep a little bit of the dunya just just in case. Yeah. But it has to be a kind of as committed as we can. Mm. You know, there was women in the times of the imams which gave, gave lectures in, fr in front of the imams as right. well, and the imams listened to them. There's narrations which um, those female companions as well, and these are never things we usually hear. You know, okay. it was always you know, it's a taboo for women to yeah. do that sort of job. But then, in the time of the imam, the prophet had female companions, the imams had female companions, and there was actually narrations which the imam sat down and they listened mm -hmm. to female giving lectures. So at the same time, there's, let me just before, yeah. many people haven't heard that narration, but there's a narration that Imam Jafar Sadiq, there's a woman called Um Khalid who had her arms am amputated because she was serving the religion. So oh. when she came, the imam said, you know, let's listen what this she had to say. And she gave a speech um, mm -hmm. in front of the Imam Jafar Sadiq. That's one of them, Hababa al Walibiyya. She was a companion of eight imams. Wow. So Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein. Imam Ali ibn al Hussein, Imam Bakr, Imam al Sadiq, Imam al Kadhim, and Imam al Rabbah. That's eight mm. Imams. She was the female, she was the companion. So she assisted in religion as well. These women we hardly hear about because True. we don't. Because and but there are there are female companions and pe females which played a huge position in spreading religion. Inshallah, in the second half of the show, um, we can look a little bit more into their lives and and uh, and what they did, and that will, inshallah, give us a better idea of um, what the role of women will be, uh, inshallah, with uh, the reappearance of the Imam Ajala Sharif. Thank you very much, and we are going to go to break now. Inshallah, we will see you again afterwards. <laughs>